Welcome to the Prepare Like a Pro live chat Sunday show. My name is Jack McLean. I am your host. And on this episode, I'll update you on all the big things to happen for the upcoming week, such as announce this week's episodes, our live chats, and have a brief uh, review and reflect on last week's live chat, which was our monthly collaborative event with the eight gym owners all around the country. And then finish up with a power tip. This week will be on game day preparation now that footballers are, are going into practice matches. So we'll discuss primer sessions and how they may be a good thing to add into your weekly preparation for game day performance. Firstly, a huge thank you to all the listeners that tuned into this month's live collaborative event. It was a massive success and I had a lot of fun hosting it. And I want to thank um, all those that tuned in. And, of course, the guest panel I was lucky enough to have eight of uh, Australia's leading um, high-performance centres involved in this and shared up to two hours of their time. So if you missed the live event or you tuned in late, don't forget supporting on our YouTube channel. Just search for Australian Leading Performance Facilities or you can go to our podcast playlist on our YouTube channel. Uh, if you can't find it, just direct message us on any of our socials and we'll send you the link. Uh, but, yeah, well worth listening to both for the developing footballers who want to better their game. The coaches all provide some tips that can help you progress as an athlete and improve your performance in the gym and ultimately on the field and prevent injuries, but also uh, for all the strength and conditioning coaches that want to work or are interested in working in the private sector uh, or potentially open their gym one day you definitely want to tune in um, with the wealth of experience that were on the panel. In terms of this week, we have our Tuesday podcast will be Jared Majidar. So we interviewed him a couple of weeks ago discussing um, how he's built a successful online business and that is now going to turn into a gym. He's been running out of his parents' garage, but now his business is going so well that he's opening up his own facility. So we discussed that growth, some marketing tips that coaches can be applying and what's what um, he's found helpful from a marketing point of view and how to develop a brand. So if you're interested in developing not only an online business but also how to work with um, professional footballers like Jerry Much has done in with body composition, make sure to tune in to our Tuesday podcast. Our Get Better Plan episode this week will be on mindset and it's all around how mindset and having the – a Elite Mindset can help you realise your potential. So some tools and tricks that you can do to boost your confidence uh, and tap into that potential that you have and make sure that you realise it. So make sure to tune in on Wednesday's Get Better Plan uh, to up your mental game. And then this week's Thursday live chat that we do every week via our YouTube channel will be with Aaron Kellett. So he is the high-performance manager of the Australian cricket team. forward to having Aaron on. His name has been dropped during a few of the podcasts, so he's worked with some of the colleagues, the high performance managers, strength and conditioning coaches we've had on the podcast, and I um, yeah, was really eager to reach out to Aaron and, and have him on and share his story, um, particularly because we haven't had anyone that's worked in the sport cricket, so really looking forward to another team sport um, and work out the dynamics of how he manages those players. Um, obviously, it's a super demanding game, playing 2020 one day form as well as the test cricket so a lot of demand on the body and no doubt Aaron's role in physically preparing the athletes but also managing their loads to be able to handle the rigors of the game um, will be good to share for the strength and edition coaches as well as the athletes on how to recover and learn from other sports um, and transfer that into your game for, for all the footballers listening so if you want to listen into that live interview that will be, as I mentioned, on our YouTube channel on the 3rd of March. It's our first March interview at 8.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. And like all our live interviews, feel free to send in your questions via Instagram or tune in and on the YouTube chat box you can send in your questions and I'll try and fit them in at the end of the chat or somewhere within the interview. Our Friday podcast episode that will be released will be a bite-sized episode with Rebecca Alcock who was working at Melbourne Football Club as the sport dietitian during their premiership year last season. She's now working at Western United in the A-League as well as working back in research. So her bite-sized discussion, a 10-minute chat, was all around how nutrition can aid 
each phase of rehabilitation. So not just the healing phase, but also as you start to progressively overload and uh, return back to performance, nutrition plays a part in all the different phases of rehabilitation. So make sure to tune into that one for the practitioners, but of course, athletes as well to pick up some gems to um, when you're in rehab at one point in your career, or maybe for those that are going through injury at the moment and you want to um, maximize your return to performance. We're going to go to Instagram now to answer your questions. Bear with me while I'm in the Instagram. G'day, Instagram world. Jack here from Bear Like a Pro for our weekly Sunday live, Prepare Like a Pro live chat show. Uh, where I answer all your questions. We've had a few that have been sent through. So the first one via Instagram is, bear with me, I'm just going to send here. This is from our stories. What's your go-to meal the night before a game? So um, typically I'm lucky enough to work in football clubs that have sports dietitians. So this is more their area of expertise and um, young players that are still developing the meal or game day operation as a whole, um, including nutrition, will we'll work with each expert on that area. So as a training conditioning coach, we'll influence their gym work early in the week as they're recovering and maximising their athlete development by getting some heavy loads in in the week in the gym, uh, making sure that they're um, continually enough load in to maintain fitness from the pre-season. So if they had a lighter game, we might get a bit of extra load in through the week from a conditioning point of view, and then we'll have some individual prep the day before a game from a physical point of view. So for some, which is going to be this week's power tip actually, for some it, it might be moving explosively the day before a game, so think med ball throws, sprints, run-throughs, accelerations, um, short, sharp movements for 15, 20 minutes. Other players have more of a contested game and strength is more their focus. They'll lift the day before a game, so think like a heavy bench press. Right, so that's quite individual. Other players may not do much at all. They just simply do the run and they just keep it pretty relaxed. Um, so it will vary from, from player to player. And the same the case from a nutrition point of view as well. Um, so best to ask sports dietitian. Uh, I know Rebecca Alcock and Jess Benlove, um, uh, Ben Parker are really re uh, receptive on interview. You want to reach out to them and ask you a question. Um, they'll be better uh, able to, to help you in that area. Next question is from Jay. I'm, I'm going to go in season. Should I still be lifting weights that were sent via email? Absolutely, Jay. If you've put in the good work, which sounds like off-season, pre-season, it's all about in-season performance. So don't team. We do want to reduce your loads by about 30%. So let's say you're working four times a week, you might break down, down to three, uh, and you might do a little bit more total body training sessions to be able to maintain um, your muscle mass but also to get good strength and power through the upper body lower body because ultimately we want to be your strong as powerful at the pointy end of the season in season uh, finals so if you start training now you're going to detrain or lose a lot of those um, that progress you made pre-season and where you want to be your strongest and most powerful is when the game is most contested and most fierce and, and highest pressure in September so making sure that you do reduce your loads, like I mentioned, you might go from four sessions to three or just simply take out some sets in your program. It used to take an hour to get through the program. Now it's your 40 minutes. You've reduced the volume, but you've kept the intensity up. So you, you're progressing your strength and power throughout the end season and you're strong where you need to be on finals. So that's really, really important. Definitely just don't, don't stop your lifting. Just reduce the volume and keep the quality and the intensity up. Next one from Tex. It is really on email. What recovery should I be doing after the game? Great question, Tex. Uh, firstly, we want to try and promote blood flow. So uh, making sure you don't, you're don't you not just sitting down getting straight into the car for an, up, you know, up to 90 minutes to actually using the muscles and helping the blood flow move around the body. So go for um, some mobility, doing some light stretching, um, getting a mass. Massage. These are really good things to promote blood flow. Um, going into an ice bath um, that is around 10 degrees, as well as going into, you might contrast that with a hot shower. So three minutes in the cold bath, three minutes in the hot shower, maybe two to three rounds of that. And that would just help, um, relax the nervous system. 
because you'll be quite uh, excited and, and your arousal level will be really high after a game now. Win or loss, be um, quite uh, alert. So we want to make sure we're calming that nervous system down and to hack the body and hack the nervous system is by using um, contrast temperatures. So going from extremely hot to extremely cold. Well, not extremely hot, but you're going to heat, going to cold. Uh, and the research suggests that 10 degrees is, is best for, for cold. So if you can have the opportunity to manipulate those, it's really good. If you don't have a hot shower uh, or you don't have access to an ice bath, but you can have a cold shower to a hot shower, do that, or just get down to your local beach. Um, but ultimately, more movement is best. Um, so make sure you're moving around um, as best you can, doing some mobility drills and, you, and restoring that range of motion that can get lost when the muscles are, are fatigued and, and body tightens up. So work through range of motion, get them, um, promote blood flow, like things like massage, like I said, uh, and think about things that you know that you've done in the past that help you feel good and help you feel relaxed so you're going to sleep well that night, which ultimately the most important um, recovery protocol is good night's sleep. Um, so if you can do things to help your body relax, restore some mobility, promote blood flow and get a good night's sleep, you're A-OK. -okay. It's a AFL summary protocol. Next one is, so yeah, it was from Jay, from Tex, Charlie. Uh, what should I be doing the morning of a game? I usually play at 2 p.m. Same thing and, and pretty much pretty consistent with all the questions that have been sent through. It is very individual, your game day preparation, just like your recovery is. So practice matches are a great time, uh, Charlie, to experiment. So try some different methods, try some different things, speak to some senior players, see what works for the best for them, for their game. Um, but for some, it might just simply be going for a walk, uh, walk the dog that morning, going for a light run, a light jog, a bike ride. Uh, others, it's just simply relaxing uh, with family and friends and taking their mind off the game. So it's finding a habit not only physically so feel ready, but also mentally as well. So maybe going out for breakfast, um, going for a little footy with some mates. So everyone's different. Uh, having a routine that works well for you is, is the key. So if you're not sure on what your morning routine for a 2 p.m. game is, ask some senior players that play at your club or that are within your network and what resonates with you, and then ultimately try that them out for a couple of games and review and reflect on how did you start the game, what was your first quarter like um, from from that preparation and that from that routine. And usually our gut knows. So if it felt good and you felt like it, it helped you um, perform well, then routine is key. Just keep sticking to that routine. That's it for this week's live questions. Our power this week on that note is our primer day. So what we typically do at Prepare Like a Pro on our online program program the day before a game and we'll split our athletes into different areas we'll have our velocity players so those that do a lot of high speed running and high sprint efforts like small forwards small backs they'll be doing velocity based movements in the gym so uh, that think like acceleration um, med ball throws and maybe some light pogos so the session's pretty short it goes from anywhere 15 to, to 20 minutes and um, they're just getting uh, they're, they're practicing moving at a really, really fast pace. Uh, and we don't muck around with those movements too often. We keep them pretty consistent, so they're not going to have any muscles on us the next day going into the game. They feel primed and ready, ready to start strong, and, and they're connected to their body way off between Thursday and Friday. They're just moving at a fast pace. So for our power base players, they tend to like that. For our more key position or inside mids or strong strength strength based players, um, we've had success with lifting heavy the day before a game. So more upper body based movements like a bench pull or a prone row. They do low volume like four sets of four, um, and they might pair that with a fast movement like a med ball throw, and they basically just work up to a heavy set of four. So it might be four reps at 80, 85 percent, let's say, of their one rep max, um, and that help their strength and, and in the contest the next day. Um, and then for some that are aerobic power that really like to work up to a sweat, doing a light uh, hit session the day before, um, then on the bike, um, things like 20 seconds on, 40 seconds off, where they just get some high repeat efforts, um, make sure that's not running base, they're not doing using 
a lot of high runnings because that might have a bit of a delayed muscle next day or they might feel a bit of fatigue or might put them at a higher risk of injury so we're sticking the toe on the bike um be another option but they're just practicing getting up to their gear getting their heart rate up a little bit and feeling from a mental point of view that they've done some work to help them uh, recover and um, mentally feel at ease going into sleep that night so for some players that's been quite effective so know what type of player you are what are your strengths um, works well for you and tapping into a little bit of that the day before can help players start their game strong the next day so have a play around with that podcast listeners like i mentioned the the movements are really really important we want to be consistent with them we don't move them around too much but practice makes it a good time to find that routine and then once we've found it come around one we don't muck around with it too much we just stick with it week after week once we know what works if you're joining our online prepare like a pro program we have a 14 day free trial all you do is go to our website like a pro.com hit the free program page and you can uh, join up and sign up as of today so the link will be in the show notes for those interested in joining the program which includes those primer workouts you just let me know which type you think you are and put those programs in, in place and i design all the online programs well lastly just to wrap up this week like a pro live chat sunday show I want to thank Jala for writing a review on our pre-game geordie mate you're a bit late i just talked about it on a pre-game powerlift, man. I just did it. You're going to have to listen to the recording. Um, Shalar, thank you for sending through a lovely review. Shalar wrote, helps with, so she's referring to the podcast on, this is on iTunes podcast. Uh, helps and amazing to hear what others say they do to help their game. So thanks, Shalar, for the review. Um, for those listening, uh, only takes a couple of seconds, but it means a lot and helps us share our information. So if you can go to iTunes, you can even rate now spotify as well i don't believe you can write a review but you can you can rate um, a star rating for the podcast which just helps us uh, reach more people so if you're listening either in the podcasting world or live and uh, you're feeling generous feel free to please pass on a review to help boost our podcast and if you want to listen to this week's uh pro interview as i mentioned earlier we're interviewing aaron keller the high performance manager of the australian cricket team and that will be on Thursday, the 3rd of March at 8.30 p.m. Listen, guys, cheers, Geordie, for the love. Best podcast ever. I don't know about that, mate, but we try. I didn't see you wrote that on that Facebook, Geordie. Yeah, pre-game, pre-game lift, power lift. Could definitely see value on it. Um, I haven't tried it with footballers, as in pre-game the, on the day, uh, but there is some research in other sports that have, it's been quite effective. So... Why not try it out? I think you keep the volume right down. Uh, there definitely could be some post-activation potentiation effect, which is what we're trying to go for. Um, and if it feels like you, it helps your start in the game, then why not do a little bit of lifting? So, you know, either some, like I was talking about before, that power-based movement, so short explosive movements that aren't going to beat up the body too much, or even a, a, um, a heavy lift as well, like the bench press. But, uh, yeah, good question, George. I love it. I'll speak to you guys soon. We'll see you on the next podcast. Make sure to tune into our live episode with Aaron on Thursday. See you guys then.